Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about writing base cases in recursion. Many times when we are given a problem and we wish to write a recursive solution for this problem, we can guess the recursive solution, like these are the sub problems we are going to call and this is how we are going to get their results and use the sub problem results to solve the overall problem. But it becomes difficult sometimes to write the base cases, how to write proper base cases so that everything is handled and we do not get stack overflow error. In this video, I'm going to consider these two problems. The first problem is finding factorial of a number and our input number n is greater than or equal to zero. The second problem is finding nth Fibonacci number. And in this problem also, n is greater than or equal to zero. Now please pause this video and try to write down recursive solutions for both the problems with proper base cases. Let us first consider the factorial problem and write down the recursive code for this. One thing we can easily guess is factorial of n can be recursively computed as n into factorial of n minus one. So let's write down this part. We return n into factorial of n minus one. Now please pause this video and think of writing the base cases. What do we write as a base case? So we do not get any error in this problem no stack overflow exception in Java or segmentation fault in C++. Our base cases are those cases, those inputs for which we cannot break the problem further into smaller sub problems. If we see the recursion tree for factorial two, we call for factorial one, then call for factorial zero. And after zero, we cannot break it further. If we see for factorial three, we come to factorial two, come to factorial one, then call for factorial zero and after that we cannot break it further. So zero is the smallest possible value after which you do not break it further. Also, every recursive call ends up calling zero, right? Because you, whatever you begin with, it's going to call with smaller value, smaller value, smaller value, and then it's going to ultimately call for zero, right? So we write the base case here as zero. If n is zero, then we return one. Now imagine that somebody writes wrong base case here. If somebody writes n equal to one here, what will happen when the test case is there with n equal to zero? So if you write the base case, wrong base case here as n equal to one, right? That's a wrong base case. And what will happen in this wrong base case? If somebody passes zero, you will call for factorial zero, which is going to call for factorial minus one because it's not going to fall into this base case, right? It's going to call for factorial minus one, which is going to call for factorial minus two and so on. It's never going to terminate. And in C++, you will get segmentation fault when you run this code. And in Java, you will get stack overflow exception when you run this code, because it's going to take lot of memory for recursion call stack, and it's going to terminate with exception or error. Let us now talk about nth Fibonacci problem. We can easily guess nth Fibonacci number can be recursively computed as sum of n minus one Fibonacci number and n minus two -th Fibonacci number, right? So we can guess this part that we are going to return fib of n minus one plus fib of n minus two. Now, what do we write as base case? What all cases we handle in this particular problem? Please pause this video and try to write down appropriate base cases for this problem. We again need to remember the same thing. For base cases, we need to handle those inputs for which we cannot further break the problem into smaller sub problems. Let's see some example recursive inputs. When we have Fibonacci two, we call for Fibonacci one and we call for Fibonacci zero. When we have Fibonacci three, we call for Fibonacci two, which calls for Fibonacci one and Fibonacci zero. And Fibonacci three, after calling for Fibonacci two, calls for Fibonacci one. If you draw recursion tree for bigger problems like Fibonacci four, Fibonacci four is first going to call Fibonacci three, then it's going to call Fibonacci two. 
right? So we have handled the higher recursive calls also. Four is going to call three two. Five is going to call four three. So all those are handled. If we handle these two simple cases, now what are the cases where we cannot further break the problem? Do we handle everything if we just write n equal to zero as a base case? Please think of a case which will not work when you write zero as a base case only. The case is n equal to one. If you simply write n equal to zero as a base case, what will happen if somebody calls for n equal to one or these recursive calls for n equal to one? One is going to make a recursive call for zero and minus one, right? And minus one is not a valid input. Our input is greater than or equal to zero. So we need to handle two base cases here. We need to handle n equal to zero and we need to handle n equal to one, right? So we write our base case as if n is equal to zero, then return zero. If n is equal to one, then return one. Although we can combine these two also, we can say that if n is smaller than equal to one, then return n. That's a shortcut for writing these two base cases. But we need to handle n equal to zero and n equal to one both. Otherwise, we'll be in problem. Let us see what happens when we write n equal to zero return zero as the only base case. Right? It's a wrong code. What happens here is when you call for Fibonacci one, it calls for Fibonacci zero, and Fibonacci zero finishes immediately because we have a base case to handle zero. But this Fibonacci one is going to make one more call for Fibonacci minus one, right? Because we do not handle one explicitly. When minus one is called, it's going to call for Fibonacci minus two and then Fibonacci minus three. And Fibonacci minus two is going to call for Fibonacci minus three and minus four, and it will go on. So you will get a stack overflow exception in Java and segmentation fault in C plus plus.